So we begin now. Sister Louise, we welcome you. Oh, I don't see the. Uh... Hello and welcome. I'm Sister Louise Michek. I work in the Justice Center with Yesenia and Maria Lena. On behalf of the Sisters of St. Joseph of Orange, I thank you for joining us. Today, we give witness to the migrants who arrive at our southern border in search of safety and a chance to start a new life. Today's program is hosted by a group of sisters from our congregation and a laywoman who served last month at Catholic Charities in San Diego. Not all could attend today, yet they helped us with this presentation. Joining me today is Rosemary and Sister Sue. We represent the seven women who went to the border in San Diego and served the dear neighbor at the border. I now invite Sister Sue to share more about our call to respond. Thank you, Sister Louise, and good morning to all. In April of 2021, Catholic Charities USA approached the Leadership Conference of Women Religious for the US to ask for the help of women religious throughout the country with the refugee situation along our southern border in California, Arizona, Mexico, and, and Texas. We were, they were facing tremendous challenges in caring for so many families and children at that time. Refugees had been waiting in health and human services shelters to reunite with their family members throughout the US. These centers were in dire need of volunteers and donations. Many congregations across the U.S. sent sisters. Our congregation responded to the call by sending six sisters and a member of the family of Joseph, Rosemary, this past June. The volunteers traveled to San Diego in two cohorts to serve at Catholic Charities in San Diego in any way needed and to bring comfort to our migrant brothers and sisters on their journey to safety. The volunteer opportunities were not always glamorous, like sorting and folding donated clothing for three or four days, but every effort helped to provide services needed by these families. Others of our group made many trips to the airport to help refugees arrive safely to their destinations with their sponsors throughout the US. Others accompanied families to receive their COVID vaccinations provided by the county health department one sister was able to offer help with translation for one of the case managers and lawyers working with the refugees. We worked with other religious women to help Catholic charities. I am in particular a sister of Adrian Dominicans and the IHM sisters who were also working with the refugees in San Diego. We worked, um, I'm sorry, in these facilities, the Catholic charities or workers were sometimes sheltering up to 60 families in these um, different facilities that needed assistance at that time. So this is a picture of what it was like when our two cohorts went down. Let us continue now together and take some time for prayer. Too crushed to speak You promise rest For weary feet God you care You carry those Who carry pain Bring bursting life To desert plains Give dancing hearts To those in chains God you Lost and the lonely, 
A heart that loves those with no love at all Hands to heal the hurts and the hungry you are The God who cares You stand with those who stand alone A shelter for those without a home Every tear that falls you know Cause God you care You have arms that reach The lost and the lonely A heart that loves those with no love at all Hands the heal The hurt and the hungry You are The God who So we must love You have lavished us With your love So we must love You have lavished us With your love So we must love You have lavished us With your love So we must love Give us arms to reach the lost and the lonely Hearts to love those with no love at all Hands to heal the hurt and the hungry You are the God who cares God, you And let us pray. If every human being possesses an inalienable dignity, if all people are my brothers and sisters, and if the world truly belongs to everyone, then it matters little whether my neighbor was born in my country or elsewhere. My own country also shares responsibility for his or her development. It can offer a generous welcome to those in urgent need or work to improve living conditions in their native lands by refusing to exploit those countries or to drain them of natural resources. Backing corrupt systems that hinder the dignified development of the peoples. God of love, may we always use our gifts and talents in a way that demonstrates kindness, humility, and compassion. Amen. And now, Rosemary, would you like to begin with your testimony? Thank you. I'm so honored to be here with all of you and be able to share my experience at the border with our um, brothers and sisters um, that came from other countries to um, be here. One of the things, <clears throat> one of the reasons I wanted to be part of this experience was uh, my grandparents were immigrants uh, from Mexico, um, escaping um, the political environment at that time, war with Pancho Villa. They wanted to come to the United States so that their sons 
and daughters um, uh, at 10 years old would not be taken into war. And so um, I come from a long history of pacifists, I like to say. Um, my parents were migrant workers. They went from field to field working to earn money. So uh, they worked hard all their lives. And recently watching the demonization of the migrant immigrants and uh, this perception of who they were, I felt the call to help, not just watch, but help. And so um, I really found how God was working through me during this time. Um, I felt that, um, I see that, you know, we're all given different gifts and um, I see that I have three sisters and each of us are different and each of us contribute to our family in different ways. So contributing to the family of God, we each bring something to this table that helps us. And um, what I felt um, being put to good use was my compassion and um, I easily love people. So that was really um, needed during that time and fraternity to feel um, a a kinship with all of the migrants that were coming in. Um, it was a truly a gift and an opportunity and a humbling experience. And I really felt God's presence um, in this work that we did. I felt we were being the hands of Jesus as we work with our brothers and sisters. Uh, what challenged me most is I'm not 20. So <laughs> um, we had a uh, so many different things that we did. I had no idea what we would be doing when we got there. Um, we, as uh, Sister Sue said, some of it wasn't glamorous. We're sorting clothes. And, uh, but um, I found that uh, I, I like to organize things. So I was organizing the clothes and actually came up with a system that I thought might help and uh, worked with the leader there at Catholic uh, Charities to, um, to uh, implement. And it just was so much fun to be able to do that but also the real connection and being able to work directly with the migrants, showing them to their rooms and seeing them feel the sense of relief as they got to their room and know that they were safe. You know, um, They were deposited at our doors uh, by ICE and um, they were just amazing families, beautiful people that uh, I was absolutely humbled to work with. So I really felt God's presence in all of that. But the challenging thing was one day we had 66 migrants and um, that physically challenged me, but it also um, uh, taught me uh, about our strength. Cause we, we, you know, I just prayed one moment and said, please God, give me strength. And we got through it. It was a very uh, challenging day. And the other days were not as, um, uh, burdensome as far as uh, the number of people, because it would be maybe, I think our least amount was maybe 15 or 16, and that was easily managed among all of us. And um, uh, I saw the grace that Flo and uh, Bernie exhibited when they went to the airport and helped our uh, our uh, brothers and sisters to get on planes to go to their next destination, the, to their sponsors. And uh, the fear and the relief, I, I, uh, Bernie shared with us that one of them just cried in her arms because she was so relieved to finally be able to get on that plane. So, so many moments that were, uh, uh, that we experienced. And um, there were several things that moved me the most. Um, the realization that these people are coming to our country with all the hope and, um, and anticipation of a better life in this United States, because we are the symbol in the world, in the United States. We are the richest country in the world. And these people come here hoping to share a small piece of that. And you saw it in every one of their faces. It was humbling to me that we live here. And um, it really spoke to me as far as our responsibilities of citizens of this great country, to be able to be welcoming to these people who have all the hope in the world. And I felt um, just so much uh, peace, knowing that we did our part to say welcome to America. We pray for you and we wish you the best and we love you. And we just, um, it was just a small part that 
I could do that we, my um, uh, friends that went with us, Sister Louise and Flo and Bernie and my cohort, um, it was just amazing to be able to be there with them. And the other, other thing that um, I'm a lay person, so uh, Sister Louise at night, we would do a uh, recap of the day that talked about our experience and also the opportunity to talk about how Jesus, how we encountered Jesus that day. And that really helped um, re help us reflect on the work we were doing and also gave me strength to do it again the next day. I cannot say enough about how much I really loved being there and having that opportunity. And I can tell you, we are helping everything that we do helps them. Um, I'm just happy that I was able to be a part of it and humbled for the experience. Sister Sue, how did you feel about your experience there? Well, thank you, Rosemary, for sharing um, your experience with us. Uh, when we went down, it was after the first cohort had gone down. And for me, the experience was a call to um, kind of be a support system. I am very comfortable with direct service, with hands-on kinds of activities. And in a way, I felt um, a connection to Catholic Charities. They have been the ones that I've worked with closely to um, sponsor the two refugee families that we have here at the Mother House. And um, I realized that when you are working in a network, you need support at all different levels. So that was kind of what was calling me to this experience. Catholic Charities said, we need help. The, the immigrants coming in, they need help and they're getting the help through Catholic Charities and other organizations that are um, you know, meeting their needs and, and addressing their needs at the, this time. So it was kind of, um, a support that I wanted to give to those who are supporting the incoming immigrants, knowing that there's just so much going on um, on that level of systemic hospitality besides the individual hospitality. So whatever way we were able to be a support to the work that Catholic Charities is doing and has done constantly throughout the years, I just am totally uh, behind that. Um, and, and that's, in a, in a way, that's a, a blessing in itself, just to be part of an, a group that feels strongly about their call um, to reach out to the, the others in need around them. So I was very proud to be part of whatever Catholic Charities was doing, and it meant folding clothes four days in a row and whatnot and, and delivering them. That's fine with me. That It, it was what was needed. Um, and I could see certainly God working in that, um, the workers of Catholic Charity, the workers that had asked volunteers to come were so relieved and so grateful and astounded mm -hmm. by the amount of work we were able to do. I mean, here you have, you know, um, four nuns organizing this huge donation um, that had arrived of clothing and we had it done in, in you know, fast time they couldn't even imagine it was going to get done in the time we were there. Mm -hmm. It's it's our way of contributing and keeping the whole system flowing so that more and more people can be served. So it was a very indirect way, which is not my usual, but it was great to be part of that. I think um, maybe what was challenging for me most, um, just in my, my concept of, of what I was going down there to do and be part of, I knew very well it wasn't going to be as much hands-on in direct service. So um, I'm figuring, okay, by the end of the day, the you know the three of us that um, went down together, you know, we'd have some downtime and and um, you know sharing or or getting to know each other or just enjoying each other's company, and we were just dead tired. I was for myself, but I think the other two were pretty much too. So there really wasn't a whole lot going. I brought cards to play and I was ready to, you know, do whatever in the evenings. And we were um, 
just zonked, you know, just ready to call it a day because we'd put so much energy and, and effort into all that we'd been doing all day and it was tiring. And that's okay. It's great to go to bed exhausted, knowing that I had done everything I could that day to serve the Lord through the people that I was involved with. So that was challenging to kind of reset my mind that, okay, this is just really focused time and it's taking all my energy and that's all right. I think what moved me most in this experience was um, the last day when we accompanied travelers through the airport and through security um, because of their lack of language and, and their, their status to get to the gates that they needed to get to to travel to their destinations. Um, that's somewhat of an anxious and stress-provoking experience for anyone, I think, um, especially if you speak the local language and those that don't and th those that don't have um, <clears throat> a real safe immigrant status, it was just much more stress-provoking. And so to see the, the family that I accompanied just kind of follow along and, you know, we chatted as we went a bit in Portuguese, so to speak, and my Spanish. Um, and then the other family that went to the same gate and just to, to see how, how they got through that, they were just trusting us to lead them through. And there was no problems. The person we had in, in the security, um, um, the TSA agent, was so welcoming and friendly. And that has not been my experience always. Um, I, that was for me very moving just to see that whole process and how they trusted and got through it and, and just kept moving one step at a, you know, at a time to their next um, destination. So I can see God's hand in so many ways. And the TSA agent um, wanted you know, support and prayer for something that she was dealing with. And so it, it's just, we're all brothers and sisters, you know? Uh, it doesn't matter what country we're from and, and who we are or what language we speak, we're all kind of in this together. And that's kind of, that's what I felt as we moved through the airport even, which was surprising to me. And that was a great experience. I think that's enough for my <laughs> reflections. I, I hope uh, from, what we have shared here that any one of you who are viewing this could find a way that you too feel called by God to put in your little um, drop in the, of water in the bucket or a grain of sand. Um, there's just so many ways that we can create that human family bond and we are all brothers and sisters and to share that kind of welcoming and, and openness and hospitality to those around us. Thank you for joining us today. Each of us have been blessed with gifts from God. From these varied gifts, in what way can I help my migrant brothers and sisters? Were you able to hear my reflection question?
after these wonderful testimonies that we have just heard, uh, it is my pleasure now to talk about a call to action. What exactly can we do now in response to what we just heard? Migrants are arriving at our borders and want to be seen, they want to be heard, touched, and supported. We have a responsibility to form solidarity with them by applying the principles of the three A's, acceptability, accessibility, and adaptability. Let's take acceptability to accept the immigrant. Welcome the immigrant with a smile and whenever and wherever you see them, be welcoming to them, not afraid because they just want some love. Take the initiative to connect with them, to hear their stories and tell yours. Make them feel welcome. And my little suggestion is, are you familiar with the Google Translator? It's, on, uh, it's one of the apps you can use for non-English speaking migrants. And they themselves even carry their cell phone, if they have one, with the Google Translator on it. So it is a way of connecting one language to the other. And I would really recommend that uh, you all put this on your telephone. Accessibility, make sure that they access what they need. Migrants need orientation, information, and education to feel like a true neighbor. They need to know their rights, such as asking for a lawyer or refusing to sign documents. It's important that we share these rights. We've provided a guide for you on this link that uh, which is posted on the chat and also will be in your email. But it helps to see what migrants should know. And then there's adaptability. Adapt to your circumstances. Offer continued guidance and care if that if that's what you need to do to help them, to help them learn and adapt to this new way of life. Be a neighbor to them. Educate yourself about the plight of migrants and be proactive about protecting their rights. Consider helping out at the border with any nonprofit organization. You can do it through your church, through the workplace, the neighborhood could also be a first start in leading to action. And you can also contact us through the Sisters of St. Joseph. And we will help you in regards to where you could do some action for the border. And you can also consider making a contribution to Catholic Charities or any resettlement center of your choice. We have Catholic Charities uh, website given and it will also be on your email that you can make a donation to Catholic Charities for the work that they do that maybe you aren't able to go and do. We wanna thank you for joining us today. We hope you've been moved by what you have witnessed here today. And we invite you to continue to advocate and be a prayerful presence for our immigrant brothers and sisters. The action and prayer will be sent to you along with the link to our recording later today. Please join us again next Thursday. And on behalf of the Sisters of St. Joseph of Orange, we thank you. <laughs>